Australian English is the set of varieties of the English language native to Australia. Although English has no official status in the Constitution, Australian English is the country's national and de facto official language as it is the first language of the majority of the population. Australian English began to diverge from British English after the first settlers, who set up the colony of New South Wales, arrived in 1788. By 1820, their speech was recognised as being different from British English. Australian English arose from the intermingling of early settlers, who were from a great variety of mutually intelligible dialectal regions of the British Isles, and quickly developed into a distinct variety of English which differs considerably from other varieties of English in vocabulary, accent, pronunciation, register, grammar and spelling. History the earliest form of Australian English was spoken by the children of the colonists in early New South Wales. This first generation of native-born children created a new dialect that was to become the language of the nation. The Australian-born children in the new colony were exposed to a wide range of dialects from all over the British Isles, in particular from Ireland and South East England. The native-born children in the colony created the new dialect from the speech they heard around them, and with it expressed pure solidarity. Even when new settlers arrived, this new dialect was strong enough to blunt other patterns of speech. A quarter of the convicts were Irish. Many had been arrested in Ireland, and some in Great Britain. Many, if not most, of the Irish spoke Irish and either no English at all, or spoke it poorly and rarely. There were other significant populations of convicts from non-English speaking parts of Britain, such as the Scottish Highlands, Wales and parts of Cornwall. Records from the early 19th century show this distinct dialect in the colonies after the first settlement in 1788. Peter Miller Cunningham's 1827 book Two Years in New South Wales, described the distinctive accent and vocabulary of the native-born colonists, that differed from that of their parents and with a strong London influence. Anthony Burgess writes that, "...Australian English may be thought of as a kind of fossilised cockney of the Dickensian era." The first of the Australian gold rushes, in the 1850s, began a large wave of immigration, during which about 2% of the population of the United Kingdom emigrated to the colonies of New South Wales and Victoria. According to linguist Bruce Moore, "...the major input of the various sounds that went into constructing the Australian accent was from South East England." Some elements of Aboriginal languages have been adopted by Australian English mainly as names for places, flora and fauna for example dingo and local culture. Many such are localised, and do not form part of general Australian use, while others, such as kangaroo, boomerang, budgerigar, wallaby and so on have become international. Other examples are kue and hard yakka. The former is used as a high-pitched call, for attracting attention, pronounced ki, which travels long distances. Kue is also a notional distance, if he s within kue, we LL spot him. Hard yakka means hard work and is derived from yakka, from the Jagara, Yagara language once spoken in the Brisbane region. Also of Aboriginal origin is the word bung, from the Sydney Pigeon English and ultimately from the Sydney Aboriginal language, meaning dead, with some extension to broken or useless. Many towns or suburbs of Australia have also been influenced or named after Aboriginal words. The best known example is the capital, Canberra, named after a local language word meaning meeting place. Among the changes starting in the 19th century were the introduction of words, spellings, terms, and usages from North American English. The words imported included some later considered to be typically Australian, such as bushwhacker and squatter. This American influence continued with the popularity of American films and the influx of American military personnel in World War II, seen in the enduring persistence of such terms as OK, you guys, and G. Topic phonology and pronunciation topic The primary way in which Australian English is distinctive from other varieties of English is through its unique pronunciation. It shares most similarity with other Southern Hemisphere accents, in particular New Zealand English. Like most dialects of English it is distinguished primarily by its vowel phonology. Topic vowels topic The vowels of Australian English can be divided according to length. The long vowels, which include monophthongs and diphthongs, mostly correspond to the tense vowels used in analyses of received pronunciation as well as its centering diphthongs. 
The short vowels, consisting only of monophthongs, correspond to the RP lax vowels. There exist pairs of long and short vowels with overlapping vowel quality giving Australian English phonemic length distinction, which is unusual amongst the various dialects of English, though not unknown elsewhere, such as in regional southeastern dialects of the UK and eastern seaboard dialects in the US. As with New Zealand English, the weak vowel merger is complete in Australian English, unstressed is merged into schwa, unless it is followed by a velar consonant. Topic consonants topic There is little variation in the sets of consonants used in different English dialects but there are variations in how these consonants are used. Australian English is no exception. Australian English is non-rhotic, that is, the r sound does not appear at the end of a syllable or immediately before a consonant. However, a linking r can occur when a word that has a final in the spelling comes before another word that starts with a vowel. An intrusive r may similarly be inserted before a vowel in words that do not have in the spelling in certain environments, namely after the long vowel o and after word final. This can be heard in law r and order, where an intrusive r is voiced after the w and before the a. There is some degree of allophonic variation in the alveolar stops. As with North American English, intervocalic alveolar flapping is a feature of Australian English. Prevocalic t and d surface as the alveolar tap after sonorants other than per meter, as well as at the end of a word or morpheme before any vowel in the same breath group. For many speakers, t, and, d, in the combinations, tr, and, doctor, are also palatalized, thus, ter, and, doctor, as Australian, r, is only very slightly retroflex, the tip remaining below the level of the bottom teeth in the same position as for, with, it is also somewhat rounded, to say, are the way Australians do you need to say, w, at the same time, where older English, wr, and, r, have fallen together as, r. The wine-wine merger is complete in Australian English. Yod dropping occurs after s, z, and theta. Other cases of sj and zj, along with tj and dj, have coalesced to and d, respectively, for many speakers. J is generally retained in other consonant clusters. In common with most varieties of Scottish English and American English, the phoneme l is pronounced as a dark, velarized l. In all positions, unlike other dialects such as received pronunciation and hiberno Irish English, where a light L i.e., a non-velarized L is used in many positions. Topic. Pronunciation Topic. Differences in stress, weak forms and standard pronunciation of isolated words occur between Australian English and other forms of English, which while noticeable do not impair intelligibility. The affixes airy, ori, ori, berry, berry and moni seen in words such as necessary, mulberry and matrimony can be pronounced either with a full vowel or a schwa. Although some words like necessary are almost universally pronounced with the full vowel, older generations of Australians are relatively likely to pronounce these affixes with a schwa while younger generations are relatively likely to use a full vowel. Words ending in unstressed eel derived from Latin adjectives ending in illus are pronounced with a full vowel, l, so that fertile rhymes with fertile rather than turtle. In addition, miscellaneous pronunciation differences exist when compared with other varieties of English in relation to seemingly random words. For example, as with American English, the vowel in yogurt is pronounced as long o rather than short o. Vitamin, migraine and privacy are pronounced with e as in mine rather than i and respectively, pedophile is pronounced with e as in red rather than i and urinal is pronounced with schwa rather than e. Long i. As with British English, advertisement is pronounced with tomato and vase are pronounced with as in father instead of a, zebra is pronounced with e as in red rather than i, and buoy is pronounced as bow as in boy rather than bi. Two examples of miscellaneous pronunciations which contrast with both standard American and British usages are data, which may be pronounced with da instead of a, day, and maroon, pronounced with own, as opposed to O O N Topic Variation Topic Academic research has shown that the most notable variation within Australian English is largely sociocultural. 
This is mostly evident in phonology, which is divided into three socio-cultural varieties: broad, general, and cultivated. A limited range of word choices is strongly regional in nature. Consequently, the geographical background of individuals can be inferred, if they use words that are peculiar to particular Australian states or territories and, in some cases, even smaller regions. In addition, some Australians speak Creole languages derived from Australian English, such as Australian Creole, Torres Strait Creole and Norfolk. Sociocultural the broad, general and cultivated accents form a continuum that reflects minute variations in the Australian accent. They can reflect the social class, education and urban or rural background of speakers, though such indicators are not always reliable. According to linguists, the general Australian variant emerged some time before 1900. Recent generations have seen a comparatively smaller proportion of the population speaking with the broad variant, along with the near extinction of the cultivated Australian accent. The growth and dominance of general Australian accents perhaps reflects its prominence on radio and television during the late 20th century. Australian Aboriginal English is made up of a range of forms which develop differently in different parts of Australia, and are said to vary along a continuum, from forms close to standard Australian English to more non-standard forms. There are distinctive features of accent, grammar, words and meanings, as well as language use. The ethnocultural dialects are diverse accents in Australian English that are spoken by the minority groups, which are of non-English speaking background. A massive immigration from Asia has made a large increase in diversity and the will for people to show their cultural identity within the Australian context. These ethnocultural varieties contain features of general Australian English as adopted by the children of immigrants blended with some non-English language features, such as the Afro-Asiatic and Asian languages. Topic. Regional variation Topic. Although Australian English is relatively homogeneous, there are some regional variations. The dialects of English spoken in South Australia, Western Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, Queensland and the Torres Strait Islands differ slightly in vocabulary and phonology. Most regional differences are in word usage. Swimming clothes are known as cossies or swimmers in New South Wales, togs in Queensland, and bathers in Victoria, Tasmania, Western Australia and South Australia. What most of Australia calls a stroller is usually called a pram in Western Australia, South Australia and Tasmania. Preference for some synonymous words also differ between states. Garbage i.e., garbage bin, garbage truck dominates over rubbish in New South Wales and Queensland, while rubbish is more popular in Victoria, Tasmania, Western Australia and South Australia. The word footy generally refers to the most popular football code in an area, that is, rugby league or rugby union depending on the local area, in most of New South Wales and Queensland, and Australian rules football elsewhere. Beer glasses are also named differently in different states. Distinctive grammatical patterns exist such as the use of the interrogative A also spelled I or I, which is particularly associated with Queensland. There are some notable regional variations in the pronunciations of certain words. The trap bath split is more complete in South Australia, which had a different settlement chronology and type from other parts of the country. This resulted in a British English influence that lasted longer that of the other colonies. Words such as dance, advance, plant, graph, example and answer are pronounced with a, as in father, far more frequently in South Australia while elsewhere in Australia the older, a, as in mad, is more common. L vocalisation is also more common in South Australia than other states. In Western Australian and Queensland English, the vowels in near and square are typically realised as centering diphthongs, nay ya, whereas in the other states they may also be realised as monophthongs. A feature common in Victorian English is salary celery merger, whereby a Victorian pronunciation of Ellen may sound like Allen to speakers from other states. There is also regional variation in U, before, L, as in school and pool. Vocabulary Intrinsic traits Topic. 
Australian English has many words and idioms which are unique to the dialect and have been written on extensively, with the Macquarie Dictionary, widely regarded as the national standard, incorporating numerous Australian terms. Internationally well known examples of Australian terminology include outback, meaning a remote, sparsely populated area, the bush, meaning either a native forest or a country area in general, and good day, a greeting. Dinkum, or fair dinkum means, true, or is that true? Among other things, depending on context and inflection. The derivative dinky d means true or devoted. A dinky d Aussie is a true Australian. Australian poetry, such as The Man from Snowy River, as well as folk songs such as Waltzing Matilda, contain many historical Australian words and phrases that are understood by Australians even though some are not in common usage today. Australian English, in common with several British English dialects for example, Cockney, Scouse, Glaswegian and Geordie, uses the word mate. Many words used by Australians were at one time used in the United Kingdom but have since fallen out of usage or changed in meaning there. For example, creek in Australia, as in North America, means a stream or small river, whereas in the UK it means a small watercourse flowing into the sea. Paddock in Australia means field, whereas in the UK it means a small enclosure for livestock, bush or scrub in Australia, as in North America, means a wooded area, whereas in England they are commonly used only in proper names such as shepherd's bush and wormwood scrubs. Litotes, such as, not bad, not much, and you're not wrong, are also used, as are diminutives, which are commonly used and are often used to indicate familiarity. Some common examples are arvo, afternoon, barbie, barbecue, smoko, cigarette break, Aussie, Australian, and pressy, present, gift. This may also be done with people's names to create nicknames. Other English-speaking countries create similar diminutives. For example, Gaza, from Gary, or Smitty, from John Smith. The use of the suffix o originates in Irish Gaelic Irish o, which is both a post-clitic and a suffix with much the same meaning as in Australian English. In informal speech, incomplete comparisons are sometimes used, such as sweet as, as in, that car is sweet as, full, fully, or heaps, may precede a word to act as an intensifier as in, the waves at the beach were heaps good. This was more common in regional Australia and South Australia but has been in common usage in urban Australia for decades. The suffix li is sometimes omitted in broader Australian English. For instance, really good can become real good. Australia's switch to the metric system in the 1970s changed most of the country's vocabulary of measurement from imperial to metric measures. Since the switch to metric, heights of individuals are listed in centimetres on official documents such as a driver's licence but older people understand and may speak of feet and inches. Topic. Comparison with other varieties Topic. Where British and American vocabulary differs, Australians sometimes favour a usage different from both varieties, as with footpath for US sidewalk, UK pavement, capsicum for US bell pepper, UK green, red pepper, or duna for US comforter, UK duvet from a trademarked brand. In other instances, it either shares a term with American English, as with truck UK, lorry or eggplant UK, aubergine, or with British English, as with mobile phone US, cell phone or bonnet US, hood. A non-exhaustive selection of common British English terms not commonly used in Australian English include Australian usage in brackets, Arctic, articulated lorry, semi-trailer, aubergine, eggplant, bank holiday, public holiday, bedsit, one-bedroom apartment, bin lorry, garbage truck, cagoule, raincoat, candy floss, fairy floss, cash machine, automatic teller machine, ATM, child minder, babysitter, chivy, nag, cling film, glad wrap, cling wrap, cooker, stove, courgette, zucchini. 
sky wag, dungarees overalls, dustbin garbage rubbish bin, dust cart garbage rubbish truck, duvet duna, elastoplast plaster band aid, estate car station wagon, fairy cake cupcake patty cake, free phone toll free, football soccer, full fat milk full cream milk, goose bumps goose pimples, high street main street, Hoover v to vacuum, horse box horse float, ice lolly ice block icy pole, kitchen roll paper towel, lorry truck, marrow squash, nettled irritated, off license bottle shop, pavement footpath, potato crisps potato chips, red, green pepper capsicum, pilchard sardine, pillar box post box, plimsoll sand shoe, pushchair pram, stroller, saloon car sedan, snog v kiss, swan v to go somewhere in an ostentatious way, sweets lollies, tangerine mandarin, utility room laundry, wellington boots gumboots. A non-exhaustive list of American English terms not commonly found in Australian English include acclimate, acclimatize, aluminum, aluminium, bangs, fringe, bell pepper, capsicum, bellhop, hotel porter, broil, grill, burglarize, burgle, busboy, included under the broader term of waiter, candy, lollies, cell phone, mobile phone, cilantro, coriander, comforter, duna, counterclockwise, anticlockwise, diaper, nappy, downtown, CBD, drywall, plasterboard, emergency brake, handbrake. Brake, faucet, tap, flashlight, torch, frosting, icing, gasoline, petrol, golden raisin, sultana, hood, bonnet, jello, jelly, jelly, jam, math, maths, nightstand, bedside table, pacifier, dummy, period, full stop, parking lot, car park, popsicle, ice block, icy pole, railway ties, sleepers, rear view mirror, rear vision mirror, row house, terrace house, scallion, spring onion, silverware, flatware, cutlery, stick shift, manual transmission, streetcar, tram, takeout, take Takeaway, trash can, garbage, rubbish bin, trunk, boot, turn signal, indicator, blinker, vacation, holiday, upscale, downscale, upmarket, downmarket, windshield, windscreen. Terms shared by British and American English but not so commonly found in Australian English include abroad, overseas, cooler, ice box, esky, flip flops, thongs, pickup truck, ute, wildfire, bushfire. Australian English is particularly divergent from other varieties with respect to geographical terminology, due to the country's unique geography. This is particularly true when comparing with British English, due to that country's dramatically different geography. British geographical terms not in common use in Australia include coppice, cleared bushland, dell, valley, fen, swamp, heath, shrubland, meadow, grassy plain, moor, swampland, spinny, shrubland, stream, creek, woods, bush, and village. Even the smallest settlements in Australia are called towns or stations. In addition, a number of words in Australian English have different meanings from those ascribed in other varieties of English. Clothing-related examples are notable. Pants in Australian English follows American usage in refer to British English trousers but in British English refer to Australian English underpants, vest in Australian English pass also in American refers to British English waistcoat but in British English refers to Australian English singlet, thong in both American and British English refers to underwear otherwise known as a g-string, while in Australian English it refers to British and American English flip-flop footwear. There are numerous other examples, including biscuit which refers in Australian and British English to what in American English is cookie or cracker but to a savoury cake in American English, Asian, which in Australian and American English commonly refers to people of East Asian heritage, as opposed to British English, in which it commonly refers to people of South Asian descent, and potato chips which refers both to British English crisps which is not commonly used in Australian English and to American English French fries which is used alongside hot chips. In addition to the large number of uniquely Australian idioms in common use, there are instances of idioms taking differing forms in the various Anglophone nations, for example home away from home, take with a grain of salt and wooden, tea touch with a ten-foot pole, which in British English take the respective forms home from home, take with a pinch of salt and wooden, tea touch with a barge pole, or a drop in the ocean and touch wood, which in American English take the forms a drop in the bucket and knock on wood. Topic. Grammar Topic. As with American English, but unlike British English, collective nouns are almost always singular in construction, e.g., the government was unable to decide as opposed to the government were unable to decide. Sean. T. The use of should as in I should be happy if 
the use of haven t any instead of haven t got any and the use of don t let s in place of let s not common in upper register british english or almost never encountered in australian or north american english River generally follows the name of the river in question as in North America, i.e., Darling River, rather than the British convention of coming before the name, e.g., River Thames. In South Australia however, the British convention applies—for example, the River Murray or the River Torrens. As with American English, on the weekend and studied medicine are used rather than the British at the weekend and read medicine. Similarly, around is more commonly used in constructions such as running around, stomping around or messing around in contrast with the British convention of using about. In common with British English, the past tense and past participles of the verbs learn, spell and smell are often irregular learnt, spelt, smelt. Similarly, in Australian usage, the to in all right to you is retained, as opposed to US usage where it may be dropped. While prepositions before days may be omitted in American English, i.e., she resigned Thursday, they are retained in Australian English, as in British English, she resigned on Thursday. Ranges of dates used to, i.e., Monday to Friday, as with British English, rather than Monday through Friday in American English. When saying or writing out numbers, and is inserted before the tens and units, i.e., 162, as with British practice. However Australians, like Americans, are more likely to pronounce numbers such as 1200 as 1200, rather than 1200. <laughs> Spelling and style Topic. As in most English-speaking countries, there is no official governmental regulator or overseer of correct spelling and grammar. The Macquarie Dictionary is used by some universities and some other organisations as a standard for Australian English spelling. The Style Manual, for authors, editors and printers, the Cambridge Guide to Australian English Usage and the Australian Guide to Legal Citation are prominent style guides. Australian spelling is closer to British than American spelling. As with British spelling, the U is retained in words such as colour, honour, labour and favour. While the Macquarie Dictionary lists the R ending and follows it with the R ending as an acceptable variant, the latter is rarely found in actual use today. Australian print media, including digital media, today strongly favour R endings. A notable exception to this rule is the Australian Labour Party, which adopted the American spelling in 1912 as a result of her spellings. Comparative popularity at that time. Consistent with British spellings, re, rather than er, is the only listed variant in Australian dictionaries in words such as theatre, centre and manoeuvre. Unlike British English, which is split between eyes and eyes in words such as organise and realise, with eyes favoured by the Oxford English Dictionary and eyes listed as a variant, eyes is rare in Australian English and designated as a variant by the Macquarie Dictionary. A and O are often maintained in words such as maneuver, pedophilia, and fetus, excepting those listed below. However, the Macquarie Dictionary lists forms with e, e.g., pedophilia, fetus, as acceptable variants, and notes a tendency within Australian English towards using only e. Individual words where the preferred spelling is listed by the Macquarie Dictionary as being different from the British spellings include program in all contexts as opposed to program, inquire and derivatives inquired, inquiry, etc. as opposed to inquire and derivatives, analog as opposed to digital as opposed to analog, livable as opposed to livable, gorilla as opposed to gorilla, yogurt as opposed to yogurt, veranda as opposed to veranda. Panda, burka as opposed to burka, pasty, food as opposed to pasty. Unspaced prepositions such as onto, anytime, all right, and anymore are also listed as being equally as acceptable as their spaced counterparts. Different spellings have existed throughout Australia's history. A pamphlet entitled "The So-Called American Spelling," published in Sydney some time in the 19th century, argued that. There is no valid etymological reason for the preservation of the U in such words as honour, labour, etc. The pamphlet also claimed that, "...the tendency of people in Australasia is to excise the U, and one of the Sydney morning papers habitually does this, while the other generally follows the older form." 
What are today regarded as American spellings were popular in Australia throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries, with the Victorian Department of Education endorsing them into the 1970s and the Age newspaper until the 1990s. This influence can be seen in the spelling of the Australian Labour Party and also in some place names such as Victor Harbour. The concise Oxford English Dictionary has been attributed with re-establishing the dominance of the British spellings in the 1920s and 1930s. For a short time during the late 20th century, Harry Lindgren S. 1969 Spelling Reform Proposal Spelling Reform 1 or SR1 gained some support in Australia. In 1975, the Australian Teachers' Federation adopted State Route 1 as a policy. State Route 1 calls for the short e sound as in bet to be spelt with e, for example, friend, friend, head, head. Both single and double quotation marks are in use with double quotation marks being far more common in print media, with logical as opposed to typesetters punctuation. Spaced and unspaced m dashes remain in mainstream use, as with American and Canadian English. The dd, m, y, 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 y date format is followed and the 12-hour clock is generally used in everyday life as opposed to service, police, and airline applications. Topic. Computer keyboards Topic. There are two major English language keyboard layouts, the United States layout and the United Kingdom layout. Australia universally uses the United States keyboard layout, which lacks pound sterling, euro currency and negation symbols. Punctuation symbols are also placed differently from British keyboards. Topic. See also Topic. The Australian National Dictionary International Phonetic Alphabet Chart for English Dialects Strine Diminutives in Australian English Topic. References Topic. Topic. Works cited Topic. Cox, Felicity, Palethorpe, Sallian 2007. Australian English. PDF, Journal of the International Phonetic Association, 37 3, 341-350, doi, 10.1017, Topic. Further reading Topic. Topic. External links Topic. Aussie English, the Illustrated Dictionary of Australian English Australian National Dictionary Centre Oswards — free newsletter from the Australian National Dictionary Centre, which includes articles on Australian English Australian Word Map at the ABC — Documents Regionalisms R. Manel, F. Cox and J. Harrington 2009, An Introduction to Phonetics and Phonology, Macquarie University Aussie English for Beginners — The Origins, Meanings and a Quiz to Test Your Knowledge at the National Museum of Australia <laughs>